Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, or welcome to those of you who are visitors here with us this morning as well. This morning, God reminds us that people without God's word are like sheep without a shepherd. There's all sorts of different ideas about spirituality out there, and if we're not careful, we can be led astray. We can chase after those, those false teachings. That's what we hear in our readings for this morning is that those false teachings are as old as sin and chasing after them can be a real temptation. But thanks be to God, our Father sent his son Jesus to be our good shepherd who teaches us by his word. We know his voice and we see that in the voice of his word, our sins are taken away by our good shepherd who laid down his life for us, his sheep. With that in our hearts and minds, let's begin with our opening hymn. This morning, that hymn's 372, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. Please stand as you're able. We continue on page two in our worship folders. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. 
I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers, be gracious to us in our weakness, and give us strength to keep your commandments in all we say and do, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. We read verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away. You have not taken care of them. But I will certainly take care of you because of the evil things you have done, declares the Lord. I will gather what is left of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their pastures. They will be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. They will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Listen. The days are coming, declares the Lord, 
when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, who will reign wisely as king and establish justice and righteousness on earth. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is his name, by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. This is the word of our Lord. This morning, our psalm is Psalm 23. We'll sing that in the form of a hymn, so we join together to sing hymn 360, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. Our second lesson, which will serve as our sermon text for this morning, comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. We begin reading with verse 7. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Carefully consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Obey your leaders and submit to them. For they are keeping watch over your souls as men who will give an account. Obey them, so that they may do this with joy and not with groaning. For that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us, because we are sure that we have a good conscience. And because in everything, we want to conduct ourselves in an honorable way. I urge you to do this even more, so that I may be restored to you quickly. Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, in connection with his blood, which established the eternal testament, may he equip you with every good thing to do his will, as he works in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Our verse of the day for today comes from Mark chapter 6, verse 34. Alleluia. Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Alleluia. 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 These words are written that we may believe. Jesus 
stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading comes from the gospel of Mark chapter 6. We, be, we read verses 30 through 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were so many people coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. But many people saw them leave and knew where they were going. They ran there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. When Jesus stepped out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. His heart went out to them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We join to sing our next hymn, hymn 531, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. In the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends in Jesus, 
Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. The writer of the book of Hebrews wrote those words, and there are our sermon text, our second lesson for this morning, and he goes on. He says, carefully consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. You know, there's one part of the worship service, whenever we gather here in God's house, that, that we can thank our past Christian leaders for maybe more than any other part. No, it's not the part where we read God's word. That comes from God. It wasn't just leaders who came up with that. We thank God for his word that permeates our whole worship service. Well, there's something else we can thank past Christian leaders for. No, it's not the hymns. I'm not really thinking about that either, although they certainly are a blessed part of our worship service and an encouraging thing to sing and to take in to our hearts. No, the aspect, the part of our worship service we can thank our past Christian leaders for more than any other part, perhaps, in the worship service is the creed, our confession of faith. Every time we gather for, for, for worship, we, we confess a summary of God's word. Sometimes it's the Apostles' Creed, and sometimes it's the Nicene Creed, the, the little longer one. And one time a year, it's the Athanasian Creed. That's the really long one. Do you know when we confess each creed? Do you know there's a rhyme and a reason to when we confess the Apostles' Creed versus the, the Nicene Creed? Maybe you have it figured out. Or maybe, maybe to you it's just kind of a random thing. Oh, today it's the Nicene Creed. Well, there's a rhyme and a reason to it. This morning, we will be confessing in a moment the Nicene Creed. We always confess the Nicene Creed when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Because the Nicene Creed focuses on the person and work of Jesus, who he is and what he had to carry out for us and for our salvation. And that connects with the Lord's Supper that we get to partake in in just a moment later on in the worship service. The creed, a summary of God's word, the Nicene Creed. And there's more to that creed, those words we'll say in a moment, than, than meets the eye. Every phrase of the Nicene Creed was written in blood. There were historical disputes. There were spiritual arguments. There were theological debates that give us those phrases that we confess. Believers fought over those truths. Truths like that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Or the phrase, he descended into hell. There were bitter disputes. Sometimes blood was spilled over those confessions of faith including the phrase we'll confess in a moment, the Holy Spirit, the fact that he proceeds from the Father and the Son. Not all Christians add that last phrase, and the Son, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from both the Father and the Son. Christendom was divided in two over that phrase, and still is today. That Nicene Creed comes to us written in blood. Christians fought over these summaries of God's word throughout the ages. But 300 years after Jesus died and rose again, there was a new threat that came into the church from within, really. And it may have been one of the greatest threats the church ever faced, and maybe it still is to this day. 300 years after Jesus, there was a pastor in the Roman Empire named Arius. And he was a really good preacher. In fact, we have historical accounts that this pastor Arius could preach a sermon like none other. This pastor Arius was, was pretty good to look at, too. We have that. It has come down to us in history also. He was tall, dark, and handsome. And he could write a good hymn. He was known as this wonderful hymn writer, and people were, were humming his tunes hundreds of years after he was a pastor. And that all sounds great, except that Pastor Arius, after a while, started to teach something different than what the Bible taught. He started to teach that Jesus was, was not really fully God, not, not like God the Father. Pastor Arius started teaching that there's God the Father and then there's God the Son. And, and he's not as much God as God the Father. He's, he's second tier. 
and people took it. He was a good preacher. He, he wrote hymns about this stuff, and they loved to sing those hymns, and, and really, was, was it all that bad? It sounds so logical. There's God the Father, and then there's God the Son. People ate it up. But it was dangerous. In fact, it was completely wrong. And yet millions of people started to, started to believe that, that, that Jesus, well, he was a really good guy, and he, he was kind of God, but, but not entirely. And, and now we might even start wondering, well, is that really that big of a deal? I mean, if he was a good preacher, if he was a good hymn writer, and, and, and so on, does it really matter? And this morning, we see that it does. That to take God's word and to change it even just a little bit is so dangerous because it leads people astray. It leads people away from God's word. That, that Pastor Arius, he had led so many astray. He led so many to believe that Jesus really isn't truly God, that that the other pastors of the Christian church at that time had to gather together and they had to figure this out. Is what Arius is saying correct or, or is there more to this? And after much debate, after gathering together for months and months and going back to God's word, they saw what the truth is and they put it together in a confession of faith. Tell me if it sounds familiar. Those pastors gathering together wrote this down. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Those words probably sound familiar. They're the words of the Nicene Creed. That, that's what they put together as a summary of God's word in the face of false teaching. But here's the part where I have to admit something. I don't often think about those battles when I'm confessing the Nicene Creed. I don't think about the fact that these words have been handed down to us, written in blood, because people lost their lives over this stuff. I don't think about that too often. In fact, oftentimes I'll I'll simply go through the words of the creed, just trying to say them correctly, but not really thinking about what they mean or what I'm confessing. And maybe that's because I didn't have to go to battle for these words. I just, I just get them. They've been handed down to us from faithful Christians throughout the centuries. I suppose it's kind of like taking freedom for granted. If, if you never had to fight for freedom or if you never had to live without it, you just naturally start to take it for granted, don't you? And the same can be said of, of God's word. The, these faithful truths that have been passed on down to us by faithful Christians, all by the grace of God. And it's that warning that the writer of the book of Hebrews this morning gives us. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Don't forget them. Don't forget their message. And don't forget how they lived their faith. Carefully consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. All right, well, what would happen if we didn't? I mean, would it really be the worst thing if we, if we forgot our leaders who spoke God's word to us? If we didn't really take notice of how they lived their faith? I mean, what happens if you don't? Is it really that bad? Well, what happens is Pastor Arius. What happens is people start to, to pull away from God's word, and pretty soon those truths we, we forget or we take them for granted, and then perhaps we even give them up or water them down. That's what the writer of the book of Hebrews is warning us. That's why God speaks so seriously about this in our first lesson. God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah in a very serious, very straightforward, law-filled way. God says, woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Those weren't the spiritual leaders that God wanted for his people. They were like shepherds who led the sheep into danger. They were like shepherds who would leave their sheep to the wolves. 
God's leaders were supposed to be humble. They were supposed to be selfless. They were supposed to point God's people to God himself. But instead, in the days of Jeremiah and beyond, a lot of those leaders were pointing the people to themselves or, or to false truths. And eventually what happened was God's people started to take God's word for granted. And there are times when we do that too, aren't there? When those truths that have been passed on down to us, we, we take them for granted because we didn't have to fight for them and put our lives on the line for them. And, and if we didn't, then it can be easy to, to just say them without thinking it. Like the Nicene Creed, a summary of God's word. So easy to just say the words and think about how long it is or what the next part of the worship service is or what I'll be doing later on today. And that's true of pastors too. I say it, but then I forget it. History tells us that a guy like Pastor Arius, he, he had a lot going for him. Tall, dark, handsome, could preach a good sermon. That's what drew people. But you know who, who wasn't? Jesus. God's word tells us that there wasn't anything about Jesus' physical appearance that drew people to him. It wasn't like he was a, a Hollywood movie star who, who came into Platteville and everyone noticed on Main Street, wow, did you see that? Did you see that guy? Where, where my family and I came from in Two Rivers, the old folks would say back in the day, you, you could sometimes catch a glimpse of Charlton Heston. He would go to Two Rivers and people would see him downtown. There he is, there's Charlton Heston. He had married a local gal. And every once in a while, he could be seen along Lake Michigan and in two rivers. People would notice him right away. That wasn't Jesus. People didn't notice him because of how he looked. He wasn't a head taller than everybody else. Well, instead, it was what uh, Jesus came to say and what he came to do. The leaders of Jesus' day, they, they wanted the crowds. They wanted the praise. They didn't care about the message. Jesus came to be the shepherd that no one else could be. His sheep were lost. We were lost, lost in our sins. And our good shepherd Jesus came to be like, like no shepherd we had ever seen. He came to give his life for you and for me. He came in order to take away all of our sins of taking his word for granted. All the times when we, we could confess our faith, but we didn't really think about it. For all of those sins, our good shepherd suffered and died. He did for his flock, for you, in order to bring you into his flock, to make you his own. And now your good shepherd continues to preserve you. Your good shepherd continues to work through those, those faithful Christian leaders who, who shared that word with you. Your Lord and Savior Jesus, who died, rose again for you. God brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. And now he promises to work through his word for you. There'll always be people like, like Pastor Arius from eras ago. There'll always be people who will take God's word and twist it and pull people away, sadly. So how, how can we prevent that? How can we watch out for that? Continue to look and thank God for those who spoke the word of God to you. Continue to be grounded on that true word of God so that you can see a false teaching coming a mile away. Remember how the, those leaders of the past, how they lived that faith, how they stood up for that faith. Use that as an encouragement in your own life. And who are those, those past leaders we should be looking up to? We think of in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul or, or Peter. We think of in the early Christian church, stalwarts of the faith like, like Athanasius or Augustine or, or John Chrysostom. But you don't have to think about those stalwarts. You can think about the other leaders throughout history who, who shared God's word with you. Sunday school teachers who teach and faithfully share God's word anonymously. Their names aren't going to be in any history book that someone picks up, but in your life they made all the difference. Vacation Bible school teachers, we're, we're going to start Vacation Bible school tomorrow. 
again, the, these folks, they're, they're, they're not going to be put in any sort of history book for people to read about, and yet how wonderful that they serve, serve faithfully, serve that true word of God to the next generation. Dear friends in Jesus, thank God for those men and women. See how God enabled them to live their faith and use that as an encouragement as you live your faith for your good shepherd, Jesus. Remember those leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Carefully consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. And remember why. Times may change, but your God and his word do not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able. And the peace of God which transcends all human understanding, may it guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus, your good shepherd. Amen. At this time, we have opportunity to confess our Christian faith. And this morning, we use the words of the Nicene Creed on page 9 in our worship folders. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we give our offerings to the Lord. Please stand for prayer. In our prayers this morning, after our responsive prayers, we'll uh, also have in our prayers uh, a prayer on behalf of our nation. Um, in the past week, uh, Donald Trump, uh, in the midst of assassination attempt and the various political turmoil, we take all of these cares and concerns to our Lord in prayer. We pray. 
Heavenly Father, our sinful memories fail us. We forget your loving kindness shown to us through previous generations of faithful believers. We have taken the truths of your word for granted. Yet in love, you remembered your promise to us. In order to win our salvation, you consigned your son Jesus to oblivion. Thank you for your patient reminders of your mercy for us. Holy Spirit, renew in us an appreciation for your powerful word and sacraments. May we never take them for granted. Guide us by your word that we may forever remember your love for us. Heavenly Father, it's in the midst of political turmoil, and not only in our nation, but throughout the world as well, that we come to you in prayer. We thank you for watching over those who have survived assassination attempts, such as Donald Trump. We ask that you continue to watch over all elected officials and those running for office continue to, to strengthen people in the midst of, of chaos and remind all of us that the authorities, they're assigned to us by you. You work even through bad for the good of those who love you. We ask that you continue to watch over us, continue to look after your church here in this world and remind us of the mission you have set before us to preach the gospel message to all we find in front of us as you place them before us. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. And so we join to pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament, and as we do, we remember and give thanks for the confession of faith we gave together just a moment ago, the Nicene Creed that reminds us of what we believe and the foundation of that faith being all of God's work. So when it comes time to come forward for the Lord's Supper, if you're a member here, we invite you forward. If you're not, but you'd like to learn more, please talk to me after the worship service, because we'd love to have you. We continue with our responses. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God and I will exalt. for you become my salvation. Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Sin of the world, have mercy. 
may be seated.
please stand. We join to sing together the song of thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With cups of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. We close with our final hymn, hymn 536, Lord Jesus Christ, the Church's Head.
morning again to all of you. Good to worship with you, whether you're a member or a visitor or watching online. Um, just a few announcements. You can find those, most of them, on the back page of the bulletin. Uh, a reminder that uh, this week, this coming week, is our Vacation Bible School uh, in, in the morning, and so we are looking forward to sharing God's Word with that next generation. Um, and uh, again, that'll be uh, in the education building. A big thanks to everyone who has been uh, helping, uh, serving with their time, talents, and, and abilities. We, we really do uh, appreciate it. And, and treasures as well. Um, uh, thanks to everyone who, who brought snacks too for our, our snack time uh, every week uh, or every day of the week, I should say. So um, uh, let's see, just a couple of other things. A reminder, following dismissal, we'll have our quarterly voters meeting right here in the, in the sanctuary. So uh, if you'd like, come on back in uh, for that. Um, and the reminder for uh, cookbook recipes, we're putting together the church cookbook for the upcoming 150th anniversary of, uh, of our church, of our congregation. One of the things to celebrate that uh, church cookbook. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to add a, a recipe to that, sheets are in the entryway, and you can kind of fill out fill out the sheet as it as it guides you there. And then one thing that didn't make the bulletin, but I'll make sure to put it in. Uh, from here on out, uh, on August 11th, the second Sunday in August, we'll have our church picnic. So August 11th. Um, and uh, the way we do that is we have the worship service here, and then the, the church picnic will be in Belmont again. Last year we had it at Bond Park, but it won't be at Bond Park this year. We couldn't get Bond Park. Maybe it's a blessing. They've been doing work all around there. Um, but uh, it, instead, it's the park in Belmont by the water tower. Do I have that right, Dan? That, uh, the, okay, okay, so the, that, that, uh, that park, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll remember the name and put it in the bulletin <laughs> from here on out, but it'll be that, sort of that area. So, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's maybe everything I had. Was there anything else, uh, any other announcements that need to be said? Yes, Joel. Yes, th thank you for that, Joel. Yeah, so uh, not, not too late to, uh, to send a kid to va vacation Bible school. Just let us know. Um, we've got extra material and, and so on, so we'll, we'll, we'll take everyone, e even, even late registers and so on. Yeah, thank you. Um, anything else? If not, then the Lord richly bless the rest of your day and the rest of your week as well.